Welcome. In this section in linear data analysis, we'll explore what it means for a matrix to be diagonalizable. Let's begin by, let's consider a matrix A, and we'll suppose that the matrix A has all real entries, and that it has n rows and it has n columns, and we'll suppose that it has n linearly independent independent eigenvectors. And linear independence is a concept that we've come across in prerequisite material and that we explored in an earlier lecture. So for this matrix, now let's concentrate on the jth eigenvector. Say, so for eigenvector number j, what we know is that if we take this eigenvector and we pre-multiply the eigenvector by the matrix A, that that is the eigenvector j and it's multiplied by a scalar and that is the eigenvalue. This is an equation that we've come across many times in prerequisite material. Now we're going to apply it. And the way we'll apply it is one of, one of our rules is see a bunch of numbers, gather them in a vector, see a bunch of vectors, gather them in a matrix. So let's suppose that we gather eigenvector 1, eigenvector 2, and so on, until we get eigenvector n, and we gather those into a matrix. And let's call that matrix E, E for eigenvector. And by our assumption, E is, these are linearly independent, and what that means is that the rank of E is n, and what that means is that E is invertible. So these are all good, good properties for it to have. Now, suppose that what we do is we take A and we operate on every one of the eigenvectors. Well, how can we do that? Well, there are two ways that we can do this, and they're equivalent. Either I could do a block, a, a block partitioning multiplication, but let's keep it a little simpler. What we know is that A times V1 has to be lambda 1 times eigenvector 1. And a times eigenvector 2 has to be lambda 2 times eigenvector 2, and so on, until we have expressed all of the eigenvectors in the matrix E. Well, this looks suspiciously like it could be structured. And how could we structure this? Well, I'll let you pause for a moment and think about ways that you could do it. What I'd like to do is I'd like to write this matrix in terms of this uh, eigenvector matrix E and in terms of some other matrix or vector. So I'll let you think about that for a moment. And my answer is that I could imagine this as coming from eigenvector 1, and then what would I multiply eigenvector 1 by so that this stayed as a matrix? Well, I would like that to be eigenvalue 1. And if I did that, now if I put all of the eigenvalues in a vector, then what that would end up doing is that would be lambda 1 v1 plus lambda 2v2, and so on, and I don't want that. So what do I multiply the rest of the, 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 rest of the columns in this partitioning of the matrix E? What do I multiply them by? Well, I must have to multiply them by 0, and so on. And then when I go to, so if I multiply v1 by lambda 1, I get lambda 1 v1, and then if I multiply v2 by 0, I get 0, and so on. So that looks like it's going to work. Now, for eigenvector 2, 
what do I multiply V1 by to get this? Well, I would have to multiply it by a 0. And then I would have to put lambda 2 here. And then I'd have to put zeros and so on. And now I can see the structure of the matrix that I want. What I want is I want to put all of the eigenvalues of this matrix A along a diagonal. And so I want to have this. And the, these values are the lowercase Greek lambda. So what I'll do is to represent the diagonal matrix that has the eigenvalues of A along its diagonal. I will say that that is, so this will be the matrix E, and I'll call that the matrix lambda. So capital lambda in Greek is written something like that. So this is the diagonal matrix of the eigenvalues. Well, what can we deduce from this? So what we have is that A times its eigenvector matrix equals the eigenvector matrix times the eigenvalue matrix. And these are linearly independent, and so E is full rank, and so E is invertible. And that means that E inverse exists. That means I can post multiply, multiply by E inverse. And I could do it at the start, or I could do it at the end. Let's post multiply it first. So that means that that would be a times E, and then I multiply by E inverse, and that equals E times lambda times E inverse. And that is equivalent to saying that A equals its eigenvector matrix times its eigenvalue matrix times the inverse of its eigenvector matrix. And when a matrix, so that means that the matrix A is similar to a diagonal matrix, and when that happens, we call A a diagonalizable matrix. So we now have a sufficient condition for a matrix to be diagonalizable, and that is that its eigenvectors are linearly independent. Now, I said that we would post-multiply first. What happens when we pre-multiply? Well, or we could say that E inverse times A times E equals E inverse times E times lambda equals E inverse E is the identity, so that is lambda. So this gives us a way, this says that A is similar to a diagonal matrix, and this equation gives us a way to transform A to its diagonal matrix. So I'll say such a matrix is, and the term here is diagonalizable. And that means it can be made into a diagonal matrix. And the specific way we make it into a diagonal matrix is by a similarity transform. That is, we find a matrix such that the matrix times uh, uh, such that A is the matrix times the diagonal times the inverse of the transformation matrix. Now, what we have is a statement that, so um, what we've actually done is we have shown a sufficient, sufficient condition. And that is not necessary because there are um, 
Okay, so it's not necessary. We haven't shown that. And in particular, so the converse is not true. Not true. And what I mean is that um, uh, there exists an infinite number, but there exists a matrix A that is diagonalizable. Example. And that does not have linearly independent eigenvectors. Now, so what properties does A need to have? Well, it turns out to be sufficient but not necessary that each of these eigenvalues has a different value. That is, it's sufficient that it be distinct. Now, let's make a, a final observation, uh, and we'll wrap up this session, and that is um, that uh, a sufficient condition is that A has an eigenvector basis. That is, when we have a set of linearly independent vectors, those are a basis, and here we have n of them, so they are a basis for the column space of A, and when this, when A has n linearly independent eigenvectors, what we'll often say is that matrix A has an eigenvector basis.